All right, it is your lucky day. Um, what we have here is negative 2 9 times x minus 4 equals 7 18. So you might say, why is this my lucky day, Mr. McGlow? Well, the reason why it's your lucky day because I'm going to show you two different ways to solve a math problem. All right, I'll try to make it as quick as possible. I really, I really will. But there's two ways I've been showing you how to do this problem. The first are these types of problems. And my marker, OK. So the first way I showed you how to do this, um, or just ways I've showed you how to deal with fractions, is just to get rid of them, right? And that's absolutely true. You can just get rid of them. So if that's the way you prefer, then you can just watch me do it this way, and then stop the video, right? Next thing. If you want to see another way, um, it's not typically faster. It's just a different way to look at it. And it could be faster for other problems. So it is important to understand. However, so. To get rid of fractions, we need to multiply by the least common multiple of our denominators, which we call the least common denominator. So I take a look at my denominators, and I can rewrite this as a fraction as negative 4 over 1. So I look at what is the common multiple of all three of my denominators. Well, the common multiple is 18. So that means I have to multiply every single one of my terms by 18. If I don't multiply them all by 18, then I'm not going to produce equivalent equations, which I have to do, or my answer is not going to make sense, or it's not going to work. Whoa, that's kind of crooked. Sorry about that. So therefore, now I can just do my math. And remember, that's eight, it's 18 over 1. So 18 is in the numerator. It has to be in the numerator because the whole point of doing this is to get rid of the denominators. So if 18 is in the numerator and 18 is in the denominator, they're going to divide to make 1. 1 times 7 equals 7, right? Well, some students will put 18 in the denominator. Well, remember, you're eliminating the whole purpose of doing this. Our whole purpose of doing this is to get um, 1 on the denominator to eliminate it. So here, negative 4 times 18. Is this different than 1 is 2? OK, no. Negative 4 times 18 is going to be a negative 72 over 1, but I'll just leave it as negative 72. And then I have uh, negative 18 times negative 2 is a negative 36, divided by 9, which is going to be a negative 4x. So I have negative 4x minus 72 equals 7. Pretty cool, right? Now what I can do is I can add 72 to the other side, so I get negative 4x equals 79, right? Because I have a two-step equation, so I undo subtraction by adding on both sides. Now I'm going to undo multiplication of a negative 4 by dividing by a negative 4. And then I'll just go ahead and take a look at my calculator, even though I know um, the decimal approximation, ow, sorry, I got caught there, mm, is going to be x equals negative 19.75. So that is one way to do it, all right? Now, and that way is perfectly awesome to use. And if it makes sense to you, then use it. If you want to watch another way, um, I got three minutes. I'll try to make this one in less than two minutes, all right? So the other way is whenever you have fractions, all right, and they're all different fractions, you can still solve by our operations. You just need to make sure that all the operations are in the, or all the fractions have the same denominator. So what you need to do is you need to find the least common denominator. Well, in this problem, we knew it was 18, right? So rather than multiplying everything by 18 now, we need to multiply by everything that's going to make 18 in the, in the denominator. So to get 18 in the denominator, I need to multiply by 1, right? Because 18 is already there. I don't need to show multiplying by 1 because it's still going to produce 7 18 To get negative 2 over 9 to be 18 in the denominator, I need to multiply the denominator by 2. However, to avoid having to multiply everything by 2, I need to multiply the numerator by 2 as well. Because whenever you multiply a fraction by the same numerator and denominator, it doesn't change the problem, right? What's 1 half times 2? or 2 over 2. It's 2 fourths, which is still 1 half. So since I'm not changing the value of since I'm not changing the value of the equation, I don't need to multiply everything by 2 over 2. I just need to, I can just multiply that one equation. Then I need to go for how do I get uh, negative 4 um, to be how do I get negative 4 to be over 18? Well, I have to multiply by 18 over 18. So negative 4 times 18 is going to be a negative 72 over 18 equals 7 18 Now you can see that since I have all the same denominator, it's really cool. I can just add, I can just use my inverse operations. It's just going to be with fractions. But you can all add, you can all combine because they all have the same denominator. So I have a negative 4 over 18 
equals 79 over 18 x. Sorry, got a little lazy. Then remember to undo your reciprocal um, of a, uh, when you have a fraction times a variable, you can just multiply by the reciprocal. Because a number multiplied by its reciprocal is going to produce 1. And 1 times x is x. So when I multiply by 18 over negative 4 on the other side, you can do the whole math and all that kind of stuff. But you'll end up getting negative 19.75. All right? So just multiply 79 times 18 and 18 times negative 4 and then divide those two values and you'll end up getting negative. All right, you know what? I just don't trust anybody. So I'll just show you what it is. 79 times 18 equals 1,422. <clears throat> 18 times 4 is a negative 72. So 1,422 divided by 72, negative 72 is a negative 19.75. All right, so there you go. No more whining about it. And I did it in three minutes with a little extra.